Hi, I'm Creston, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to enable HTTPS on Nginx. So we want to create a certificate signing request. This requests a certificate from a certificate provider. The next thing we need to do is submit the CSR to the certificate provider. After a period of time, you will then be able to retrieve your new certificate. And once you have you, your, your new certificate, you can upload the new certificate and your private key to your server. And lastly, what you need to do is configure Nginx to be able to use the certificate and the private key. In terms of creating your a CSR, you can use online tools such as this by uh, Digicert uh, at slash easy hyphen CSR slash open SSL. It lets you fill out all the information you need to be able to generate a certificate. However, I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, on the command line because that's how I tend to do it. Uh, and it lets me set certain settings that uh, this online uh, tool may not. Okay, now I'm going to go to the command line, and I'm on my local system here. Uh, I'm using Ubuntu. And the first thing uh, I like to do is switch to the root user. So do sudo su uh, hyphen, and then put in your password to be able to connect again to your local system as root. Now I want to go into the SSL directory on Ubuntu, it's etc slash SSL. And now I want to run the following command to generate a private key. So we're using OpenSSL uh, gen RSA, generate an RSA uh, with DES3 encryption. So this key will be encrypted. And I'm specifying the output file to be under the private directory of SSL because that's where other private keys tend to be stored. And then um, this is the name that I'm going to create, secure.rubytreesoftware.com. And I usually like to give it in a key identifier. So this is the first key I've created, uh, one key. You can feel free to change the name to whatever you prefer. And I'm specifying a bit rate of 2048. That's going to ask me for the password for it. And I'll verify it. Okay, now that we have a private key, I want to go ahead and generate a certificate request. So I'm going to run open SSL request. It'll be a new request. And I'm going to specify the key we created earlier. Again, it's in the private folder, and this is the name. Uh, and I'm specifying the output file to be, this is the name of the certificate signing request or the CSR. Uh, and I'm specifying one to correspond with the key that created it. So when you hit enter, you need to enter your private keys password. And then you start filling out your request. So the country name is the two country, two letter code. Put US, state, uh, I'm in Florida. Um, city. I'll put when, where, where I'm located. The organization name would be your company uh, or organization. Uh, and make sure not to put any capitalization in there. Uh, the organizational unit name or section I tend to leave blank. And now here's uh, your common name, which is your fully qualified domain name that you want to secure. So mine's going to be secure.rubytreesoftware.com. Uh, it then asks for an email address. I'm going to ignore that and uh, ignore this challenge password and optional company name as well. OK, the rest request should be complete. And you can actually run a command to look at it. So you can do open SSL request. Um, no, no out and in a text format basically look at this file. So when you hit enter 
you'll see this is the request and you can look through and see okay yes this is the correct country state uh, location um, your company name and most importantly the fully qualified domain name or the common name okay once that's done you want to go ahead and cat out that CSR so it's going to look like this so what you want to do is copy this area here and you paste it into your certificate providers area where it asks you to paste the CSR request so once this is pasted in and you submit it to your CSR I'm not going to uh, do that online because uh, I don't have a certificate that needs to be renewed right now um, but after a period of time it will then say okay click here to download this particular certificate request or this particular certificate now when you go to download it it may ask you the server type that you're going to download it for and you can choose nginx uh, or if they have an other option choose that now I tend to use GoDaddy and um, so I recently downloaded um, a certificate uh, and it comes in this format so it's a .zip file and if I go into it it has this is a certificate and this is um, a bundle so let me show you what I do with that I go ahead and make a directory uh, again in the etc SSL directory um, for this new certificate to unzip the contents um, from my Creston downloads area that file to this particular directory okay, I'm going to go into the directory now with um, engine X you need to concatenate these two uh, certificate files together this is your actual certificate and this is a certificate bundle you can think of like a little bit like a chain file so I'm going to cat the certificate and then add that and place it in this new what I'm calling a chain certificate so I'm giving it the name secure.rubytreesoftware.com dot one that's the key dot 2016 I put the expiration date here dot chain because I chained these together dot cert now that that's done we're ready to copy up our certificate and our key to our server normally at this point I would use Ansible to copy up the files and place them where they need to go uh, now you're welcome to uh, secure copying them up but I'm just going to do a copy and paste operation for them so I've already connected to my server here it's my test server and I'm going to edit using nano the following file so it's an etc SSL certs and this is the name of my certificate and then on my local system I'll just cat out the name and it's quite long because it's again has the chain it's a chain certificate copy that and paste it here and go ahead and save it and I like to just make sure it's okay that's good now we want to do the same thing for the private key so I'm going to uh, use again nano going to etc SSL private secure.rubytreesoftware.com one dot key because this is where it needs to go now before we cut out the private key to store it on the server there's uh, something uh, you need to think about so we set a password on our private key and that secures it on our local system however if you leave that password on 
and you just cut out the private key and copy it up to the server, you, whenever you start Nginx, you're going to need to re-enter that password. Um, so for example, if your server goes down for whatever reason uh, and needs to start back up, it won't start Nginx until that private key uh, has been entered. So what I tend to do is remove the password once I, it's placed on the server so that I don't have to put in that private key password when I want to start Nginx, um, but that's up to you. So what you can do to remove the password for pasting it up on the server, you can run the following command. So it does open SSL RSA. You're specifying the input file and I'm just going to output it to a cat. Output that's concatenate. So I put in my passphrase and now I can then copy this and paste it on the server. So now this private version of the private key will not require a password. Okay, so I know I've done copying and pasting, um, but you can choose to, of course, secure copy the files up if you want to uh, for your cert and for your keys. Just be sure to put the certs in the etc SSL search directory and the private key in the etc SSL private directory. One more thing we want to do is we want to secure the private key that's on the server by just setting some permissions. So I like to change the group to the SSL hyphen cert group and changing the file permissions so that the owner can change it uh, the SSL cert group can read it, but nobody else can read it. So that helps secure the um, private key. All right, let's go ahead and set up our Nginx configuration. So I'm going to uh, sudo nano. Uh, so I'm on my server. So I'm editing the etc Nginx sites available directory and our test app. Um, if your application's called something different, of course, edit that Nginx configuration file. So um, when we set this earlier, or when this was set with a previous tutorial, we set the default deferred option. I'm Because I'm going to be adding SSL, I want to remove this. I don't want a default deferred option. Um, usually just set that if you have one server block, but we're going to be adding a second server block. Now you could add this back if you're only going to be doing HTTPS or only going to be doing HTTP, but I'll set that uh, that way for right now. So we're going to add another server block. Okay, so here's the new server block. So we're going to be uh, listening on 443, um, keeping the same server name, um, going to the same uh, root path, uh, again, doing the same thing with the assets we've done before. Uh, so here's some of the configuration that's new. So we're saying SSL on, and we're specifying our SSL certificate. So again, this is the location where we put our certificate, and that's, that's the name of it. Uh, then we specify our uh, SSL certificate key. Uh, again, that's the one we specified before. Uh, these are the SSL protocols that we're allowing. So we're not allowing SSL uh, version 2 or 3. We're only allowing uh, uh, TS, uh, TLS versions 1 plus. Um, we've listed out the ciphers, and this will be in the show notes, the whole cipher list. Um, so the reason why we're doing these two and actually some of the SSL configuration here is to try to achieve a good um, SSL rating and to only use um, protocols and ciphers that are considered secure at this time. Okay, and then the rest of this is similar configuration to what you've seen before, although this proxy set header um, is has been added. Other than that, the configuration is pretty much identical to the HTTP server block, but you can look at that more in the show notes. 
So I'll go ahead, save it and close it. All right, the last thing to do is to uh, restart your Nginx service so it uh, gets the configuration. So now you should be able to connect to your site using HTTPS. Now, one thing you may want to do, there is a SSL server test here. So Qual Qualsys uh, does security testing and they have an SSL server test uh, open to the public, public that you can take. So all you have to do is paste your domain, near, domain name in here and click Submit. Now for the configuration that I've shown you uh, in this video, uh, it does receive an A-plus rating um, for it when you're running only using HTTPS. But go ahead and put it in here and be sure to use your HTTPS for the domain name and see what you get. Thanks.